Hi there, I'm Reimagine. I make games and other programs on Scratch. Today I'm going to continue our first tutorial on YouTube. Uh, this is part two of a five part series. Today I'm going to show you how to make the graphic design for our game. Here's a little preview of the final product. Okay, last time we left off, we designed the scripts and the player. So now we're going to design the backdrop and other graphical elements of the game. So let's go ahead and go over to the stage, backdrops, Then we're going to want to go to vector, so go down here and click convert to vector. And then you want to go over to the mouse tool, select, select the backdrop and then delete. And then we want to go to square and draw a new backdrop. By the way, the reason we use vector mode and not bitmap is bitmap when you put in it, put it in full screen, um, everything becomes very pixelated and vector fixes this. So that's why I always use vector. Okay. So now we want to choose our color. I already have a red selected, which I like. You can go down here move this around, choose whatever color you like. Okay, so now we want to add a title, so we'll go over to the text tool here, change the color to white, and then here you can change to any font you like. Personally, I think Helvetica is the best. Now, in the future, um, in a future tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use programs like Adobe Illustrator to make more advanced graphics, and that would include more fonts, since the Scratch designer can only have six fonts. Um, but anyway, that's for a future video. So let's start. So let's put in, change the color to white, and let's call this escape. Nice and big, that looks good. Okay, let's move this down a little bit. Then we wanna type in some directions. So we'll move the cursor down here. Okay. Now since this is the scratch editor, you can't really automatically make this text centered. So we just have to try our best, make it look as good as we can. So I'm just gonna enter here delete that extra space, enter here, again delete that extra space, and then instead of actually centering I'll just add some spaces. <clears throat> that looks good. Let's make this text a little bit smaller. You can just do that by grabbing on the corners, these little squares. Move that to the center, and then instead of doing a button for this basic tutorial, I'm just going to have a little sign that says press space to play. So let's add a rectangle, make sure we're in white, and draw something like that. Go back to the text, change our color to red. So to do that, we can use the eyedropper tool and click that red. And we'll go back to text, type, and we'll say press space to play. Move that to the center and we're good. All right, now that we've done that, we want to design the maze. This is the actual place where the player will play. So we're going to go over here and to paint new backdrop. And again, we'll convert to vector, delete the pre-existing one, and then we can start. So we're going to want to choose a gray. Anything is fine as long as you keep it consistent so we can detect the color later. This gray is pretty good. I might go with something a little darker. Okay, and then we're just going to want to start with the outside border.
That looks good. Now let's add the maze. So you can do this any way you want. I'm gonna just go ahead and do a classical square maze. You could try messing around with circles and other objects to make some obstacles, but walls are fine for me. So let's start. And then if you, again, if you wanna adjust how big this rectangle is, just drag on that square. And then if you try to just select this rectangle again, you'll end up just drawing tiny rectangles. So what you want to do is just make sure you have that selected if you want to move it around. What I'm going to do over here is make sort of a decoy some amaze that looks like it might work, but um, actually it's a dead end, just for fun. Okay, and then we'll just block that off. Now let's go over here and finish this off. And again, you don't have to follow my exact shapes. It doesn't really matter. And stuff like this where it isn't perfectly aligned, you can't really do a lot about it in Scratch. Um, just have to do your best. All right, now we can draw the green flag, which we'll have set to ending the game. So I'll go ahead and choose a nice green color here. That looks pretty good. Set it right there. All right, that's pretty much it for the maze. You can do whatever you want, make it more complicated. It doesn't matter. It's just something that the player has to get through as fast as they can. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and make the winning and losing screen. So you're gonna to wanna to go over to our original backdrop. You can right click it, duplicate. And then we're gonna to wanna to change this text up here to nice job, something like that. Go ahead, center that, move it up a little bit. And then we're gonna have scores here. So I'm gonna write your score. And then I can control C, control V on a Windows. And I can write world record. In the later part of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up the variables and record the score. So for now, we'll just write the text. And then that's good, we'll leave this here. Um, that's how we'll get the player to play again. And we can duplicate this and make the um, losing screen. So we can write something like, you died up here. Since they died prematurely, they don't really need these here. So we can just delete these here. Delete. Okay, now let's move this down a little bit. Move these up. You can select two objects by clicking shift. That looks good. All right, now all that's left for the backdrops is a thumbnail. We can just duplicate our original one. And basically a thumbnail, you just want something to entice players to play your game. So we're just gonna have the title of our game. Again, you can do anything you want. It doesn't really matter. Move that to the center. That looks good. 
Okay, now that we've done all the backdrops, the last thing in terms of graphic design we need to do is make a countdown sprite. So we can go over here to paint new sprite. Let's rename this to countdown. And then we can go up here. You'll see we have green right now, we're gonna need the red. So we can go back, choose that nice red. And then we'll also change the backdrop back to our maze since that's where the backdrop, that that's where the um, that's where the countdown will appear. So let's go here, again, convert to vector. Let's just type three, make that big. Center that as best we can. And then you'll notice that over here it isn't centered. All you have to do to fix that is go to the motion tab, zero, zero. And there you go. That makes me want to move it down a little bit. Okay, then we can duplicate this. Change it to two. And continue doing that. One. One more time, and we'll just type in go. All right. Um, in the next part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create global variables in order to get everything working together. In that tutorial, we'll also show you how to make this countdown sequence work. All right, thank you so much for watching. The next part of this tutorial should be shown right on the side there. You can go ahead, work on that. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, and thanks for watching.